The 18th had been a par 5 since the south course was first laid out in the 1960s. Playing from what is now the 17th green, the hole dog leg to the left and towards the current green side. Huge trees lined the right side of the fairway, and in later years tennis courts were built down the right of the hole, and these would all too often become an unintentional hazard for many second shots. The construction of the new 17th hole meant the tees here could shift to the top of the hill, and this really helped unlock this section of the golf course and maximise the potential of some pretty dramatic ground. As a long par 4 it also helps make for a more interesting finish. With birdie opportunities at the twin par 5s 15 and 16, and the short par 3 17, a long and difficult 4 was exactly what the course needed to finish here. The tee shot plays from one of the highest parts of the south course, to a fairway some 30 feet below. Tees are scattered up the slope to reduce the carry across the heath, but the most spectacular shot no doubt is from the very back tee, which is also shared with the second north. From here you can almost see 360 degrees, with views of the north course, the back nine of the south, the clubhouse and Port Phillip Bay in the distance. The hole can play up to 430 metres for the members, but another small hidden tee here, on the back right of the second tee on the north, means the hole can play up to 450 metres. A sprawling sandy waste replaced the tall trees down the right, and this helps to defend the best line into the green. Often played into a southerly breeze and demanding a long iron or wood, we added some interest to the approach for those attempting to land short, with a diagonal valley funneling anything off towards the left-hand greenside bunker. This is one of the larger greens on the course, but there are plenty of tricky pins, especially on the left side and close to the left and back bunkers. 